Hi everyone, I'm Mohsen Sombalestan from University of Southern California. I'm here to present our work on adaptive force based control for leg robots. In this work, we present a novel control structure that combines force based control into adaptive control and we aim to compensate for uncertainties of the robot's model. So one application for our control approach would be carrying an unknown heavy load using a leg robot while walking on rough train or high slope train. The motivation of this work comes from performing rescue operations in areas that are dangerous for humans to present in. These situations are mostly happening in a fire or earthquake disaster. We propose to use quadruped robots on these occasions since leg robots are more capable of walking on rough terrain to carry necessary equipment such as rescue kits or fire extinguisher. Our solution consists of the force-based control system since this approach already has shown its advantages over position control for leg robots. Here I have some videos from MIT Cheetah 3 that they use a force-based controller for their robot. As you see, it's completely robust to rough train that the robot can easily walk over obstacles and climb the stairs. While having a soft impact on the robot, by defining the friction constraint, it can walk on different surfaces with different friction coefficients, such as grass or hardwood. Moreover, it can be implemented in various gates such as bounding, trotting, and galloping with different velocity commands. Despite all these benefits that a force-based control system has, this method doesn't consider any uncertainty that push to the robot's dynamic during walking or standing. As a result, we want to integrate it with adaptive control. Aero adaptive control can compensate for model uncertainty. This video shows the UC Berkeley Quadrotter UAV, which utilizes an L1 adaptive controller. As is shown in the video, although its 200 gram mass is attached to the robot, it flies smoothly and is stable like a time that no extra mass is connected to its body. In addition, the L1 adaptive control system adapts to the model with uncertainty very fast. In our previous work, the L1 adaptive control was used to handle uncertainty for bipedal robots. We require to use position control for trajectory tra tracking, and also it just works for one single walking gait. So the current framework of L1 adaptive control needs trajectory tracking, and also for every different motion, it requires a predefined trajectory. Therefore, in this project, we are going to integrate adaptive control into force control, first to utilize the advantages of the force control, such as rough train robustness and different gate usage. And also, we want to add the ability of uncertainty compensation to our system using the L1 adaptive control. In order to get through our method, first let's look at some background in the QP controller and L1 adaptive control system. As you can see in the picture, there are four forces exert from the ground to the each leg of the robot. We can describe the simplified robot dynamics as following, which F indicates the force vector, M is total mass of the robot, IG is the inertia around center of mass, and PC is the position of the center of mass in the word frame, which is shown in the diagram, and also P1 to P4 represent the position of the each foot. It is a simplified dynamic model, since we made a few assumptions. Under the assumption of a small angular velocity, this term is relatively small and therefore it would be ignored in this framework. Also, we assume that the leg's inertia is negligible. The reason we use simplified dynamic in our framework is that we can easily present the dynamic model in a quadratic form 
and then we can apply QP optimization for solving the equation. This is how we calculate the desired force through a QP optimization, which includes terms that consider three goals. The first one drives the position and orientation of center of mass to the desired trajectory. The second one minimizes the force command, and the last one filters the change of the current solution with respect to the solution from previous step. The priority of these three goals will be adjusted by weight matrix S and a scalar gamma 1 and gamma 2. The constraint which is defined in this optimization guarantee that all computed force lies in the friction cone to prevent slipping during walking and the value of the computed force won't exceed the maximum allowable value. These values for C matrix and D vectors are equivalent to the common friction constraint rule rule that we know before. Also, for the swing leg, the force value is assigned to be zero. Now let's look at the L1 adaptive control framework. As is shown in the diagram, this control approach consists of three main parts. The first one is a dynamical system which contains uncertainty in its model. Alongside this system, we have a reference model which has the same structure as the real model, and the only difference is that the unknown uncertainty is replaced by the adaptive estimation that is governed by adaptive law. Adaptive laws update the value of estimated uncertainty in each loop based on the difference of the response from real system and the reference model. Here is the diagram of our proposed method which integrate the QP force control and L1 adaptive control. I know it seems a little complicated, but I will elaborate it in the following slide. According to the L1 adaptive control method, we need a closed loop dynamic system that represents our system. First, the state variables of our system are defined as a combination of position, orientation, translational velocity and angular velocity error of the robot, and it's calculated based on the desired value we assign for the position and velocity. The orientation error is obtained using the exponential map representation of rotation, where the logarithmic function is a mapping from a rotation matrix to a rotation vector. Then we can obtain the closed loop error dynamic in a state space form. And the control input U can employ a PD control law. The goal of the controller is to find optimal leg force that achieve the control input function described here and accordingly maintain the state variable within a bounded range. Therefore, we need to find a relation between the simplified robot dynamic and the closed loop dynamic. First, from the closed loop error dynamic, we know that E double dot is equal to the control input U. If you remember from previous slide, we described the simplified dynamic of the robot as AF equal to B, which B represents a combination of robots acceleration. By rewriting the B vector in this form, we can obtain the desired dynamic vector as a function of control input U. If we consider uncertainty in dynamics and assume that the matrices M and G of the real dynamics are unknown, we then have to design our controller based on nominal matrices M bar and G bar. Therefore, the desired dynamic can be represented as follows. The model uncertainty that appears as theta in the equation is a function of time and a state variable. Once again, we can come back to our diagram. Based on what we defined in the previous slide, now we can integrate the L1 adaptive control into a force-based QP controller. As mentioned before, eta is our state variable, theta is the model uncertainty, 
And the control input function here is employing a PD control that can stabilize the model without uncertainty. Here is our reference model. As I mentioned before, the structure of the reference model is the same as the real model, and the only difference is that the uncertainty. The robot model contains unknown uncertainty. However, the reference model is built based on our, our knowledge about system. For example, in this video, the robot carry an unknown load which represents the model uncertainty. However, some data from the reference model has been gotten from the real model, such as foot position, which are required for the QP force control part, which extracts from the real model directly. According to the formulation of theta, we estimate the theta hat indirectly through alpha hat and beta hat. And these values are computed by the following adaptation laws based on the projection operator and gamma, which is the adaptation gain matrix. Also, the reason why we choose this projection function, I mean by alpha and by beta, comes from the stability proof of the system via the Lyapunov theorem. You can find more details about it in our paper. Theta hat typically has a high frequency due to fast estimation in the adaptation law. For the reliability and robustness of the control system, it is essential to obtain a smooth control signal, especially for robotics application. Therefore, we apply a second order low pass filter with a magnitude of one. In order to show the advantages of our work, we compare our proposed method results with the non-adaptive controller. From the simulation, it can obtain that the pitch error is significantly large when we put a six kilogram load on the robot's backside. The plots show that the pitch angle has an average error of 25 degrees using the non-adaptive controller. However, the results from the adaptive controller indicate that our approach maintains the robot's error in a reasonable bounded range. And by utilizing the adaptive controller, the robot can carry an unknown six kilogram load, which is 50% of the robot's weight on its backside. Moreover, in the simulation, we demonstrate the capability of the robots walking on rough terrain and climbing a slope terrain while carrying an unknown heavy load up to 50% of its weight. And also, we apply time varying load during walking. As you see, the robot starts with carrying an unknown 3 kilogram load, and then some random forces exert on the robot during walking. For the experiment, we tested the robot during standing and walking. As you can see in the video, the robot can stand on its feet with a 6 kilogram load using the non adaptive controller. On the other hand, by employing adaptive control, the robot can stand up with a load up to 11 kg, which is 92% of its weight, with less than 5 cm error. Another point that is observed from the ex experiment is that not even the robot can hold constant heavy load, it can also carry time varying load. Now I'm going to show the result of the robot during walking. As you see, the robot collapsed when carrying just a 3 kilogram load using the baseline controller. However, by employing an adaptive controller, it can robustly walk while carrying an unknown 6 kilogram load, and the error is less than 5 centimeters. Moreover, as you see, the robot can walk and rotate in every direction. We don't need different trajectory for different motion, and the robot is just controlled by velocity command. Again, I should emphasize that the robot doesn't have any knowledge about the load we put on it. In conclusion, we have presented a solution to compensate for the uncertainty of quadruped robots during walking or standing. In this project, 
we incorporate adaptive control into force-based controller. The robot can easily stand up with an unknown load up to 92% of its weight with an error of less than 5 cm. In addition, it can walk while carrying an unknown heavy load up to 50% of the robot's weight in every direction. However, in a similar situation, the baseline controller fails to walk with a just 3 kg load. And finally, the robot can smoothly navigate on rough terrain and climb the uneven slope while carrying a time-varying unknown load. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question regarding the paper, you can ask them during our live presentation on September 13 from 2.30 to 3.50 p.m. at Hall 17, Lake Robot 2.